Ta'ala narrated in his Musnad, his great collection of hadith, on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن من ورائكم سنون خدعات أو خداعة يصدق فيها الكاذب ويكذب فيها الصادق ويؤتمن فيها الخائن ويخون فيها الأمين وينطق فيها الويبضة قالوا وما الرويبضة يا رسول الله قال السفيه يتحدث في أمر العامة So this authentic hadith collected on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that ahead of you there will be years of deception during these years of deception those who are truthful will not be accepted or believed. And those who speak lies will be believed and accepted. Those who are trustworthy will not be held in trust. And those who, are, who lack trust, who are not worthy of trust, will be trusted and looked up to. And du during these years, a ruwaybida, a specific type of person, will open their mouth. So they ask, what is a ruwaybida, O Messenger of Allah? What is this? He said, a foolish person speaking about public affairs, speaking about matters of great importance that concern everyone. So he says ahead of you, he's speaking to the companions, that in later times there will be years of deception. So the general characteristics of the years that there will be deception, the years are not deceptive themselves, but the people, the population, the lifestyle, the values, the cultures of people will be deceptive. And deceptive means that the way they look is not reflective of their reality. That's what deception is. Their reality does not show. On the contrary, the looks is beautiful, is attractive and pleasant, yet the reality of these years and whatever they contain is something that is way worse than that. And being deceptive means that your natural level of perception will not be able to see through that facade. Many people think deception, okay, yeah, I can figure this out. No, deception means most people will fall for the deception. They won't see it. Just like the hypocrites are deceptive people. When you see them, you see believers. They speak as believers, they behave as believers, they profess as believers, they dress up as believers. Everything about how they look like or how they come across suggests Iman and faith. And that's why most people don't figure them out. They can't find them out. But their reality is disbelief. That's what deception is. So years of deception means most people won't realize their reality and the truth of these days. They will fall for the deception. They will be taken for a ride. That's what it means to have years of deception. Then the Prophet ﷺ goes on to explain how this plays out, how this deception plays out. Those who are truthful, those who speak the truth, those who act in truth, those who remain true to human nature and the true values that humans are supposed to live according to. Those who live in truth, those who act in truth, those who speak the truth will be looked down upon. Why? Because they will contradict 
the popular narrative that is prevalent in a society and a community. And because they go against it, they're not seen to be trustworthy. They're not seen to be saying the truth. There will be the anomaly. They will stand out. They will be ostracized. They will be persecuted. Accusations will be thrown at them. They will be given names. They will be seen to be the anomaly. Wrong. Why? Because they, they, because they don't fit in. And that means most people will derive their standards, their values from what is prevalent in society. From the norms. From the dominant culture and narrative. So if a crime becomes normalized and practiced by the majority of society or approved of by the majority of society, even though it's immoral, when you speak out against it, you are ostracized. You are criminalized. And not only by bad people, but by the majority. Because the majority will fall for the deception. The reference point for them comes from society. Whatever people hold on to, whatever people live according to, then that's it. So they lack the moral principles. They lack the absolute nature of truth versus falsehood, morality versus immorality. Even if the whole, most of society departs from true human nature, there will be people who will speak the truth. There will be people who refuse to be intimidated by the majority and they will hold on to the principles. And these people will be accused of being liars, immoral, and so on and so forth. Whereas people who embrace immorality, falsehood, people who don't even speak the truth, they will be held in high esteem. They will be looked up to. They will be role models in society. They will be celebrated. That's the deception, but most people won't see it. Most people will see the immoral ones, the liars, they will see them as the pinnacle of society. And then they will look down upon those who speak the truth and stand up for the truth. Most people will fall for that. And it won't occur to them that we are contradicting the truth. Because they will see that the majority is upon the truth. Then those who are trustworthy, those who deserve to be trusted and held in trust, they will not be trusted. They will be held in doubt and suspicion. Whereas those who are telling lies, those who cannot be trusted with people's morality, people's well-being, those are the people whose opinion will be listened to, whose decisions will be implemented, and most people will fall for that. Immorality becomes celebrated as the best style of life and the best way to live. So the scales are altered, everything is reversed. These are the years of deception. We have to be ready. We have to take necessary measures to protect ourselves from the deception because once you become, once you fall into this deception, you become part of the machine of deception and you will start fighting the truth unknowingly because you're living from a state of ghafla, unconsciousness, unawareness, you have fallen for the deception, you have become one of its tools to propagate it and promote it more. So it's important for us to live our lives conscious, being aware, and not become desensitized to that deception. And one important principle in order to protect ourselves from that is to carefully calculate and be very meticulous about where you take your standards from. 
your value system, where does it come from? What is it based? Is it based on social evidence and how the majority live? Or do you have more absolute sources for your principles, your values, and your morality? Yeah. Uh,